Hello everyone. My name is Jesok Yang, Principal Geotechnical Engineer from Midas IT Headquarters. Today's session is on the modeling of tunnels in 2D and 3D. This is an overview for the today's session. First, different methods of tunnel excavation are presented, some of which have application in rock and soil. The simulation of this excavation process is then discussed and followed by the ways of modeling tunnel linings. And then I will introduce the case study. Civil engineering construction starts the 21st century with many alternative mechanical methods for creating underground openings. The engineer can design the most remarkable tunnel excavations, cathedral like in proportion and complex in shape. The decision as to which method to adopt is based on knowledge of the geology and the size and the shape of the opening required. This section briefly introduces three of the most common tunnel excavation techniques, highlighting some of the key features which have an implication for numerical modeling. Temporary support is today provided by a number of means, shield support, compressed air, slurry machine, Earth Pressure Balance Machine, EPB, or Shokrit. Permanent support is also provided by various means, including wedge block precast concrete and cast iron, bolt cast iron lining, reinforced shokrit, or cast in situ reinforced concrete. Tunnel shields are designed to protect against the falls of ground. They do not provide permanent support, and a lining is usually constructed within or just behind the shield. The shield itself is jacking for, jacked forwards through reaction against the completed lining. The pace is unsupported, but can be partially supported by pace jack, pace plate, or compressed air working. The method of excavation of the open face within the shield can vary. There are hand, hand excavation and mechanical alternatives, which are hydraulic backhoe excavations or load headers mounted within the shield. TBMs are closed face systems, which advance through the ground by rotation of a cutting head propelled by reaction against the construct lining. In rock application, the TBM can propel itself by reaction against the rock. Such tunneling has traditionally been uh, restricted to single bore circular section tunnels. Recent technological development <coughs> have led to the creation of quite remarkable multiple paced TBMs. <coughs> Pace support is provided through controlling the applied thrust and the rate of removal of excavated material. Tunnel headings may be additionally supported through application of slurry or EPB machines. The SCL method is a soft ground application of the new Austrian tunneling method, as well as standard circular section tunneling. SCL can be used in component, competent ground to create large non-circular openings. The method of excavation is usually by independent track or wheel-mounted hydraulic excavators. Support is provided as soon as possible by the application of sprayed concrete chocolate. This is often reinforced by a steel mesh or a series of steel hoops or arch arches installed before concreting. A permanent reinforced lining is usually created at a later date, either by the application of further shockrete or in situ concreting. The current trend is, however, towards using a single shockrete lining adequately reinforced. For large openings using SCL, it is always the case that the tunnel is created by the method of advanced headings. This can involve excavation of the crown first, leaving a temporary invert 
or the use of left and right, right side grip or a combination depending on the ground quality and the size of opening. In all cases, the advanced heading is fully lined by Shokrit before the following grip commands. Excavation in the ground induces stress relief, which causes soil movement toward the opening. If there were no closure of the ground into the opening, the volume of soil excavated would exactly equal the volume of the tunnel created. Because ground uh, does, however, close into the opening, extra soil over and above the volume of final tunnel created must be excavated. This excess soil is termed the ground loss and is often quoted as a percentage of the theoretical tunnel volume, the percentage volume loss. During the driving of a tunnel, there are various distinct causes of loss of ground into the excavation. <clears throat> the figure shows, as an example, a conventional shield tunneling machine geometry and highlights the source of short-term volume loss discussed here. First, a uh, face loss. Uh, loss first occurs into the face of the excavation, causing ground settlements to appear at the surface ahead of the tunnel. This loss can be reduced through the use of a closed face TBM, compressed air, slurry shield, or EPB machine. <clears throat> Second, uh, shield loss. Uh, it is consists of cutting bead and hood, and shield, and tail. Soil will relax gradually towards the shield after the cutting bead had, has passed, filling the bead with void if the deformation are large enough. Any over excavation will contribute to increase this radial loss. The shield drives itself forward by pushing up the last ring of lining segment to be erected. If the soil deformation are large enough to fill the bead with void, then the tail to the shield provides support to the cut perimeter of the soil. Last is the post shield loss. It is uh, composed with the on grout lining and grout lining as well. If the lining is erected behind rather than within the shield, then there will be a length of unsupported soil between the back of the tail to the shield and the erected liner over which radial deformation can occur. Once the lining is in place, whether construct within or behind the tail to the shield, ground will continue to squeeze into the excavation if a void exists behind the line. It is common practice, therefore, to grout up any voids between liners and the exposed, exposed soil surface. Expanded concrete liners are theoretically expanded against the soil, leaving no void. Now let's discuss about simulation of the sequential excavation. Tunnel excavation is a three-dimensional engineering process. While it's recognizing that three-dimensional analysis is become, becoming possible in the workplace, it is still two-dimensional modeling that dominate. This is because there are practical limits on cost and computer resource which, when performing analysis sufficiently sophisticated to handle all the complexities, restrict us to two-dimensional modeling. If multiple shallow tunnels are to be analyzed, or if the ground surface response is the, is the key to the analysis, then a plane strain representation of the transverse section is required, for example, to study effects on structures. If a single deep tunnel is to be investigated and surface effects are not of prime interest, then an actual symmetric approximation may be appropriate and heading advance can be studied, albeit 
within a simplified stress region. The stress state induced by construction of a shallow tunnel secondary stress state is 3D in general and depends on the following factors. Tunnel geometry determined by cross-section and depth, geological and hydrogeological condition of the site. In situ primary stress state determined by the depth of overburden and the lateral pressure coefficient at rest. Deformation, strength, and geological properties of the ground and the lining. And construction sequence, that is excavation stages in transverse and longitudinal directions. And temporary support, placement, and permanent lining installation techniques. The correct simulation of the 3D load disk transfer occurring ahead of and behind the tunnel phase and resulting in transverse and longitudinal arching around the unsupported section at the tunnel phase is of particular importance. Following the generation of a suitable finite element machine, before the effect of tunneling activities can be analyzed, the initial conditions in the ground must be established. This can be achieved by modeling the complete geological history of the site if it is known. If it is not known, then the initial conditions can be achieved in two stages. First, the conditions appropriate to a greenfield site are input into the analysis. Commonly, the, the engineer directly specifies the distribution of vertical and horizontal effective stress in the ground prior to any construction activity by means of the material unit weight the port pressure profile and the coefficient of earth pressure at rest. Depending on the constitutive models to be used, it might also be necessary to specify the initial void ratio and any hardening parameters required to model the soil behavior. The second stage involves simulating any previous construction activities that have occurred at the site. This could consist of demolition or construction of buildings, excavation of deep basements, construction of service, or any other tunnels. This usually involves several increments of analysis. For, tunnel, for tunnels constructed in a greenfield site, or where previous construction activities have caused minimal disturbance to the in situ soil conditions, stage 2 may be omitted. It is no source that if stage 2 is to be included, then the element representing the soil to be excavated for the tunnel must be included within the mesh and removed at the re relevant construction stage. This is also true if stage multiple tunnel analysis is to be modeled. Having established the initial conditions, the analysis goes on to model tunnel excavation for which there are various accepted methods. A recommended way of dealing with excavation during an analysis is to remove all the elements to be excavated at the beginning of the relevant construction stage. In doing this, uh, the mesh boundary is redefined excluding the excavated elements, so permitting the specification of necessary boundary conditions, such as load or displacement, and port pressure or flow conditions. In addition, computer resources are saved because when an element is excavated, it makes no contribution to the global stiffness matrix. A number of boundary conditions are required to model tunnel con construction. They include the boundary displacement conditions required to represent the far field conditions or any symmetry of the problem, any surface traction, the ex excavation of solid soil elements, the construction of structural shell elements, and the hydraulic conditions at the far field boundaries, the soil strata interface, and the tunnel lining itself. Loading and flow boundary conditions affect the right hand side of the global equilibrium equations, while its displacement and port pressure boundary conditions affect the vectors of nodal uh, 
uh, displacement and pore pressure on the left hand side of these equations. Sufficient displacement conditions must be prescribed in order to retain any rigid body mode, such as rotation or translation of the complete machine. Analysis of tunneling in drained granular materials will require careful consideration of the hydraulic bound condition both during and after excavation. In contrast, excavation in clay is usually rapid enough to be treated as an undrained process, so the tunnel perimeter may remain imp impermeable until after excavation is complete. This method was introduced by Low Eder. A predefined void is introduced into the fine element mesh, which represents the total ground loss expected. In this way, the out of plane and in plane ground loss are incorporated together with additional loss to allow for misalignment of the shield, the quality of workmanship, and the volume change due to soil remolding. It is clear, therefore, how one can account for the different tunnel construction method outlined above by varying the size of the void. For example, if model an EPB machine, the out of plane component of the total ground loss could be reduced. The void is placed around the final tunnel position and so locates the soil boundary prior to excavation. This is achieved by resetting the invert of the tunnel on the underlying soil and prescribing the gap parameter at the crown. The gap parameter is the vertical distance between the crown of the tunnel and the initial position before tunneling. The analysis proceeds by removing boundary tractions at the perimeter of the opening and monitoring the resulting nodal displacement. When the displacement of the upper node indicates that the void has been closed, and the soil is incorrect with the predefined lining position, soil lining interaction is activated at that node. The soil and the lining are actually treated as separate bodies related only by nodal force. In GTS NX, the contraction considers shielding fusion or simulate a volume loss around the lining of TBM tunnel. It can be applied by selecting beam uh, or shell element in 2D or 3D model. The contraction is for the shearing fusion of the circumferential direction of tunnel and the contraction increment, increment is for the shearing fusion in the excavation direction of 3D tunnel. The re uh, reference depth is for the depth to calculate the shearing fusion in the excavation direction of 3D tunnel. To specify this contraction, a contraction value is defined as a strain value in percentage. Another approach to model excavation is the lambda or convergence confinement method, in which the proportion of unloading before lining construction is prescribed, so volume loss is a predictive value. An internal force vector is applied at the nose on the tunnel boundary. Lambda is initially equal to zero, and uh, initially equal to zero, and uh, is then progressively increased to one to model the excavation process. At a prescribed value lambda d, the lining is installed, at which point. Uh, the stress reduction at the boundary is lambda d multiplied by sigma 0. The reminder of the stress, uh, stress reduction is applied to create the lining stress. The stress reduction with the lining in place is then 1 minus lambda d multiplied by sigma 0. In order to simplify the construction stage analysis, Load distribution factors can be considered in minus GTSNX. <clears throat> this is a numerical technique which enables the user to reflect the change effects of an element by applying distribution factors. Distribution factors are sequentially, 
C pen slowly applied uh, to represent a number of construction stages as shown in figure. The concept is generally used when construction stages are condensed in a 3D analysis or when a 3D model is simplified to, simplified to a 2D model. The load distribution factor controls the amount of stress transfer from the deactivate elements to the remaining element. This function becomes very useful when the user has to consider partial or staged stage stress transfers even after completely removing elements. For tunnel analysis, the stress in the excavated elements are not transferred at once. Instead, the stress are gradually redistributed to the rock board and chocolate over a number of stages. In such a case, the load distribution factor is used to reflect partial transfer of stresses. A method term progressive softening was developed for the modeling of natum or uh, spread concrete tunneling. The soil within the heading is softening by multiplying the soil stiffness by a reduction factor beta. The effects of the softening are evident when excavation force are applied to the, to the boundary of the future tunnel. As with the convergence confined method, the lining is installed before the model excavation is complete. If the tunnel is constructed with a bench and heading, then the above procedure can be applied to each of them sequentially. The same methodology can be applied to an analysis with side drifts. This method is similar to the convergence confinement method, but instead of prescribing the proportion of unloading prior to lining construction, the, the analysis prescribes the volume loss that will result on completion of excavation. This method is therefore applicable to predictive analysis of excavation in soil types for which the expected volume loss can be confidently and conserv conservatively determined for the given tunneling method. It is also invaluable for worthwhile back analysis of excavations for which measurements of volume loss have been made. Depending on the stiffness of the lining, further volume loss can occur during the latter process. It may therefore be necessary to install the lining at an increment which has a smaller, smaller volume loss than that de desired so that after full excavation, the desired volume loss is achieved. Using solid elements to represent a tunneling, tunnel lining allows the analysis of a very wide range of constitutive models. A significant drawback is the, the need to maintain an acceptable element shape defined by the aspect ratio of length to width. A tunnel lining is likely to be bad seen relative to the tunnel diameter and boundary distance. The consequence of maintaining an acceptable aspect ratio is the need for a large number of elements. Using zero thickness curved shell elements to model a tunnel lining removes the problem of aspect ratio control mentioned above. Their use therefore allows more flexibility in the massive definition but such elements do introduce numerical problems which can be overcome by using selective reduced integration. It is additionally advantageous that the solution for shell element is of a structural nature that is shear force, foot force, and bending one. Special constitute models can be coded for shell elements to model cracking or crushing. In MIDAS GTS NX, there is gouging, gauging element feature. Gauging element feature supports extracting structural elements from 3D solid. Gauging element can be used to assess member pores, which can, cannot be checked from the 3D solid. In a 3D model, gauging element from a solid 
can be assigned a gauging element property in order to assess moment and shear force. Many tunnel linings are jointed. This introduces particular modeling requirements. Probably the simplest way to model these tunnel linings is to use shear element and leave a gap at the position of the joint between lining segments. Tight freedom boundary conditions can then uh, be applied between the two nodes representing the ends of adjacent segments uh, here, uh, node A and B. The two nodes can be tied so that their displacement are the same, but their rotation left untied. This will result in a joint that is free to rotate, that is cannot sustain a moment, but will be able to transmit axial thrust and shear force. Clearly, this is a simplification as most segmented linings will be able to transmit some moments across the their joint. A similar procedure could be applied if solid element were used to represent the tunnel segment. In this case, the displacement of the uh, mid-side node C and D would be tied. In a plane strain analysis, the idealization represents a tunnel would, would on, uh, tunnel with an unrolled lining as shown in figure A. Uh, if in reality the lining segments are rolled, see figure B, the above uh, model may not be appropriate. In MIDAS GTS NX, shell interface elements are a new type of element primarily aimed at modeling the nonlinear behavior at the joint of prefabricated uh, lining segments. This is particularly relevant for TBM tunneling. Joints between segments are the weak points of TBM linings and concentrate translation, translational, translational and rotational deformations are among the main factors which should be considered. Inserting shell, shell interface elements between plate elements uh, used for modeling the lining segment allow capturing these concentrate translational and rotational deformations. The shape and formation of shell interface element is similar to standard line interface element. However, rotational, rotational degree of freedom are added to each node to ensure full compatibility with adjust plate element. In MIDAS GTS NX, the constant behavior available for shell interface elements includes column friction for sliding displacement and Janssen's law for hinged rotations. This figure shows an application of shell interface element for the lining of TBM model. So this is the uh, lining segment mesh set and this shows the shell interfaces element between lining segment and this is the uh, <coughs> deformation result uh, for the lining segment. From now on, uh, let's look at the case study using GTSNX. The city Lingen is a city circle metro line approximately 15.5 km long and will serve major areas of the city of Copenhagen, including the Dennis Parliament, the Central Station, the City Hall existing major S train and metro stations and national monument. The line will have driverless communication uh, based train control system with steward on board. A round trip is expected to take 23 minutes. The headway interval is expected to be 200 seconds with 28 trains of three carriages running at 90 km per hour. The project consists of 15.5 km long twin single track metro tunnels, 17 underground stations, many of them located in the historical center of the city with island platforms, 4 TBM launching, emergency, 
emergency and ventilation shaft, four crossover facilities, and three construction and ventilation uh, ventilation shaft for transporting up to two uh, two hundred thirty four thousand passengers on an average workday. Twin TBM launching tunnels. So. Um, Geotechnical framework is consists of man-made fill, glacial uh, deposit, meltwater sand, clay till, meltwater gravel, upper and medium Copenhagen limestone. Technical challenges is supposed to uh, crossing of existing metro lines and vicinity to existing stations, protection and preservation of existing buildings and structures. Groundwater control, tunneling in mixed soil conditions. Construction method is a uh, four earth pressure balanced shield TBM for the twin uh, long metro tunnels, excavation diameter of 5.8 meter, cut and cover excavation method for underground stations and TBM launching shaft, and the conventional mining for the twin TBM launching tunnels. The Lombardy Group, uh, which is the consultancy company who used who analysis using GTS NX, uh, often requested by the Copenhagen Metro team, performed detailed building risk assessment for sensible structures for seven stations and several tunnel state stretches, gave advice on proper mitigation measure if needed, gave advice on the design of break-in breakout flows for some of the stations, performed detailed 3D analysis for the intersection between new and existing tunnels at Cogens uh, Nitro. So here in this map, uh, this line is the uh, new tunnels line, and this is the existing one, and this station is Cogens Nitro station. In the framework of uh, damage risk assessment for buildings neighboring the excavation site, the effects of subsidence uh, induced by the uh, constru construction of deep underground stations were evaluated for the following size. The effect of tunnel induced settlements was analysis uh, at some stations, uh, some import selected importers uh, construction sites. Most of the structures to be assessed were, in fact, masonry buildings positioned at short distance uh, from retaining walls and were located directly above the tunnel alignment. The excavation process were modeled by means of finite element analysis using GTSNX. In general, uh, the soil structure interaction was taken into account when calculating expected damage to the structures. In order to properly model the soil behavior, advanced constitutive laws were adopted. In some cases, uh, in order to comply with the very strict limitation imposed by the Copenhagen municipality on the tolerate damage, mitigation measures were advised. <clears throat> some characteristic uh, second files uh, with 28 meter long and 1 meter of diameter. Bottom up construction with uh, immediate ejection of the cover slab and temporary struts. Shaft surrounded by 5 stories masonry buildings, distance of approximately 2 meters. And uh, this slide shows the uh, description of site and uh, specifics. Uh, this is the Kogan's Nitro stations area, and this is the uh, detail of the station. Uh, near the station, the magazine uh, department store is located. And this is the uh, view of magazine uh, department store. Uh, some explanation of the plain view of the department store 
it consists of several different structures with the different period and this is the uh, section view uh, with the profile of the ground at the side In order to eliminate the risk of uh, encounter the steel microfiles uh, under the magazine foundations and to minimize uh, other risks such as boulders, blow up, and so on, a different and deeper alignment has been proposed. The design alignment uh, should be lowered of about 1.3 meter. In the following images, the comparison between the design alignment and the deeper, deeper one will be shown. So this is the uh, geotechnical characterization uh, slide showing uh, the uh, site investigation result and also the uh, ground prop soil profile in the site. So this is the result of site investigation and this table shows the input parameters uh, in the modeling. Uh, this slide shows the, some detention of objectives for input, evaluation of the class of damage that the structure may bring back, identification of the characteristics of the materials of the structural elements, calibration of the rigidity of the structural elements, and the uh, uh, definition of uh, permanent and accidental loads on the existing structure, and discretization of the coupled ground structure model for interaction analysis, for fully coupled soil structure interaction analysis, and tunnel steps and sequences. For output, evaluation of structural stress under ordinary conditions, evaluation of absolute and differential settlements during tunnel uh, excavation sequences, and the evaluation of structural stress during the tunnel excavation sequence and comparison with stress under ordinary conditions. Evaluation of the class of damage and comparison with the allowable damage class. And uh, determination of uh, threshold levels. Finding any uh, mitigation actions. And checking with the monitoring data. Uh, this is the geometry of the structural uh, model for building. The first floor and the type plane. And actually, the superstructure for the building of a department store is modeled and analyzed by uh, using Midas Gen uh, for the building uh, structure. So, this is the uh, detailed view uh, with the uh, specific floor, and uh, this table shows the, uh, the information of the input parameters. Uh, with the different uh, materials. Uh, so it consists of uh, several uh, properties such as the masonry, cast iron, concrete, and steel, and so on. And uh, this slide shows some results, especially for settlement, displacement, uh, with the building structures. And uh, this shows the, uh, the moment of beam element. So actually, uh, the MIDAS program, we uh, cooperate between uh, the each programs. I mean, the if we have the model file from Gen, uh, the mesh and load and boundary condition can be imported into GTSNX. So uh, what I mean is that you don't need to uh, model the superstructure for the building in GTSNX, just simply import the model from Midas Gen and then you can proceed your ground modeling with a solid geometry like this to consider a fully coupled soil structure interaction. Uh, so after geometry modeling uh, you can generate the meshing for the ground. Uh, for the mesh of the building itself uh, as I mentioned you can just simply import from Midas Gen. So uh, this slide shows the uh, tunnel meshing on the ground. Uh, 
and uh, uh, another slide to show the uh, uh, superstructure of the model. Uh, mesh consists of 360,000 uh, elements totally. The ground is modeled with 220,000 of 3D elements and the tunnels with uh, including shield, lining, excavation and grout are discretized uh, uh, with 90,000 of 3D elements and uh, the foundation of all buildings with uh, 15,000 of 3D elements, wall and slabs respectively with 3,500 and 15,000 of 2D elements, beam and pillars modeled with 4,000 and 700 of 1D elements. Uh, this slide shows the uh, applied load condition for the building structure. So again, this build, uh, load also can be imported from Midas Gen. And this slide shows TBM construction phases. So as I mentioned, there are two tunnels. So the first tunnel uh, can be uh, excavated like this procedure. And then this is the, the end of uh, first tunnel excavation. And uh, followed by the second tunnel excavation like this. So. This is the final uh, tunnel excavation. And the uh, TBM method has been applied in this project. So uh, this is the TBM construction phases. And uh, uh, the lead mesh set uh, represents the uh, uh, shield. And the gray one is for the lining. So as I mentioned, uh, there are different uh, pressure type, load, load type. So in front of the TBM, uh, there are face pressure. And uh, between lining and shield, there are jack pressure. And also the solid grout, grouting is filled with between lining and the uh, uh, ground meshing. Also, the contraction load has been applied, uh, as I mentioned in the previous part. So, the numerical analysis were conducted with uh, reference to four possible scenarios, conducting a sensitive analysis with reference uh, to the value of uh, elastic modulus of sense and fine sense MS with the two different uh, siblings elastic modulus in order to investigate the behavior of existing structure in the most unfavorable condition possible in relation to the special control conditions, buildings and characteristics of the light type, light type crossed by the TBM and the excavation phase first tunnel and then the second one. For each hypothesis of the assumed module, two possible percentage of lost volume, uh, volume loss, 0.5% uh, and 1% uh, were assumed. Uh, so this is the uh, result uh, for the settlement with the construction stages. So here you can see that uh, the settlements are uh, increased with the tunnel excavation. Uh, so since we uh, modeled the superstructure of building in the model, so we can check the, also the settlement of building as well. And uh, the, the more detailed view of the deformation of the structure building again with the construction stages of tunnel excavation. Uh, this is the uh, settlement plane view of the 
uh, some specific scenario with voluminous 1% and so on. Now conclusion. Tunnel construction is a three-dimensional engineering process. If restricted to 2D analysis, then one must consider either plane strain or actual symmetric representation depending on what the analysis aims to achieve. Method of simulating tunnel construction in plane strain require at least one assumption, the volume loss to be expected, the percentage of load removal prior to lining construction, or the actual displacement of the tunnel boundary. If severe distortion of the tunnel lining are expected, that is in response to the passage of an adjusted tunnel in close proximity, then a model can be used which allows the segment linings to open or rotate at their joint or allows straight concrete linings to crack. The intermediate and long-term behavior is governed by many factors. In particular, whether the tunnel acts as a drain or is impermeable and whether the initial water forward pressure profile is close to hydrostatic or not. It is important to be aware of uh, the dependencies and so to build any prediction of intermediate and long-term behavior with a uh, critical eye. It is important to select constructive models capable of reproducing field behavior. For example, in a situation where pre yield behavior dominates the ground response, it is essential to model the nonlinear elasticity at small strains. The finite element method can be used to quickly assess the impact of different influence on tunneling induced ground movements. Parametric studies can uh, prove extremely useful in the development of design chart and interaction diagrams. One of the great benefits of numeric analysis to the tunnel designer is that an analysis can incorporate adjust influence. Uh, in this case, uh, we can consider the superstructure uh, which has been modeled in MIDAS gen, just simply uh, import into GTSNX. For example, existing uh, surface structures or existing tunnels. Uh, it is also possible to reproduce the effects of compensation going routing to protect surface structures during tunneling project. This online seminar has demonstrated the power of the finite element method in this respect. Thank you for your attention.